Hey there, and welcome to yet another live stream with even more surprises from BMW Motorrad. You may have already seen the films and photos of the new Concept C02 posted on TikTok and other channels earlier today, but this is the place to take a much closer look at it and chat to some of the lucky people directly involved in this exciting urban mobility project. So let's get to the point, let's get to the bike, and let's find out exactly what's been going on behind the scenes to bring us to this point. As always, if there's anything you want to know, post a question in the comments, and we'll get back to you, or maybe even answer it during the live stream. Anyway, first up, I'd like to welcome the Head of Vehicle Design at BMW Motorrad, Alex Bucan, who's in our Munich studio with the new Concept CE02. Great to see you again, Alex. Hey, Andy, nice to see you too. Hey. So, Alex, we were told some time ago that there would be some seriously cool electrified products for the urban environment coming our way. Having already seen the CE04 e-scooter unveiled just a couple of months ago, we've now got this super exciting but totally different concept to enjoy. So please tell us about the thinking behind the concept CE02. Well, Andy, um, yeah, the thinking behind that. Basically, I mean, the entire project of the CE02 has been started as an open project, so to speak, as a kind of, let's say, um, experiment to become familiar with a new customer mindset and uh, as a journey yeah, uh, to define the urban mobility in a new way. And um, yeah, with the general question like, um, what is the demand, what is the need yeah, um, for, um, for a modern mobility and how does the mo uh, modern mobility can look like, of course. And uh, yeah, to tackle this kind of project, um, we had to learn to drop our learned knowledge in terms of our traditional motorcycle customers. And Andy, I can promise you this is not that easy. Did you ever try you know, to forget things if you need to? I mean, this is not that easy. I mean, it's easy if you don't want to, but <laughs> if you don't need to, this is really difficult. And um, yeah, um, yeah, we, we um, had to tackle these kind of project and uh, yeah, we had uh, really these, um, um, now have a little bit, um, in, 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 um, wait a second, a little, I need to organize myself. And, yeah, um, it's kind of like sort of forget everything you ever thought you knew about motorcycles. Exactly, and, so I and, forgot it already. And take By it the way, the... Andy, maybe you can forget <laughs> and you can try to forget our nice uh, interview then later on, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but listen, Alex, I mean, it, it's amazing looking and it's the second electrified model we've seen this year, isn't it? But it's clearly aimed at a totally different audience than the CE04 and maybe a much younger audience, I would say. It's definitely like that. It's definitely like that. Um, compared to the CE04, um, um, we addressed this bike really to um, our youngest fans, to, let's say, um, let's say to all these urban lifestyle shapers around the world and um, as I mentioned already these guys are extremely young um, they are really design and lifestyle a theme they have a really let's say um, yeah they are uh, careless they are uh, um, you know open-minded they have a curious open mindset and um, on top of that of course they have a really um, let's say um, uh, ecological consciousness and this is definitely new to us yeah of course it's uh, definitely a new audience of course yeah i'm really enjoying those close-up shots now design wise we've never seen anything like this before from bmw motorrad it's to me at least it's neither a conventional motorcycle or a scooter as we know it so can you please tell us a little bit more about the design journey of this latest concept alex mm -hmm. Okay, I try to, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, we, we struck definitely a new path in terms of uh, our learned, let's say, um, viewing habits about the modern motorcycles. And uh, yeah, so we turned everything upside down and we merged, um, you know, a motorcycle proportion with the Bonanza bicycle proportion. And May Andy, you remember that fancy um, uh, Bonanza bicycle from the early 70s. I mean, this is exactly what we merged together. And um, yeah, uh, we, we merged it quite a lot. And that's why we have that distinct, let's say, horizontal, horizontal orientation of the bike. And of course, these ape hanger handlebars. And um, yeah, and instead of um, using, yeah, let's say, these known dynamization tools, um, we have used mainly horizontals and verticals. And um, that's why we have that, let's say, distinct, unagitated dynamic on the bike. And uh, Andy, may you feel it, you know, subconsciously um, on the second layer, there is something more going around. 
and uh, we have played a bit with these, what uh, psychologists call it, you know, the Kindchen schema or these childlike characteristics. You know, the big head with the cute little nose with the tiny little specky arms and legs and this compact body. And um, yeah, according to um, that, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, principles, we have also placed some oversized and undersized regions um, on the bike. And uh, to make it a bit more tangible, um, I have, uh, you know, some, uh, I have, uh, I have to, to, to name a few of them. Yeah, like for example, um, these um, yeah, the disc wheels, of course, with the oversized tires. Yeah, back and the front. We have also these uh, oversized um, handlebar cover to hide all the wires and cables, as well as the tribal clamp and the fork cover, just to name a few of them. So this is the, let's say, the oversized regions. And for the undersized regions, um, of course, I need to name the micro TFT, of course. Um, we have these tiny little tail light and headlight unit. And of course, also the center of the body, because since we have placed, you know, the latest um, electric drivetrain technology next to it, we could make it really, really compact. And uh, on top of that, we have these flattened floating seat with its visible uh, structure, visible because we have used the semi-transparent um, um, uh, seat cushion. And on top of that, of the seat, we have these belts to keep some baggage in place. And um, yeah, this brings me right away to the color and trim concept because mainly all these, uh, the main uh, body panels are mainly in unpainted black plastic to emphasize, you know, the rugged and robust character of the character of the bike. And to boost somehow, you know, the stickers um, we have on the bike. And um, uh, yeah, to, to get a little bit more of contrast, of course, we have also placed these uh, silver paint as engine cover, but keep in focus these fancy stickers and I really like that for example here on the back wheel yeah these nicely done or these bold graphic of the BMW badge here on the um, on the front wheel and of course a little bit of lyrics as well and I like that really much you know these little thing from Goethe yeah I really like that little little hint you know a little bit of lyrics this is a bit contradictional but I really I really like it but um, I need, um, I, I, I totally forgot to mention that we have placed also some, some Easter eggs on the bike um, to ignite somehow the, um, the, uh, the curiosity of these guys. This is exactly what they want. Uh, that, uh, that's why we have placed some Easter eggs. And of course, I cannot betray all of them um, because otherwise it wouldn't be Easter eggs anymore. Um, but one of these is already visible and that's why let's keep an eye on that. So that means, Below the battery pack, we have this uh, little rack here. And uh, by first glance, it looks really like an ordinary rack with some foot packs. But a little detail makes a difference. This is this little hook here on this, on this rack. So you can fix your skateboard on that. For example, yeah, this is just an example. So you can fix it and in some easy little steps, um, you can fix it and you have the most fanciest um, floorboard on earth on your bike and this is I think this is mega mega cool so this is you know um, just briefly you know an, um, a, a short journey to all these fancy design features of the concept CE02 Fantastic, Alex. There was a lot to get through there. I know, and very, very cool indeed. Uh, loads of Easter eggs, loads of surprises. I like, I like to see more Easter eggs. So it definitely warrants a closer look. And I'm really loving the different proportions and the character of this concept bike. I'm, I'm just really interested to know: did it evolve much from the early sketches? Of course, Andy. Of course. Um, there's a big difference in between uh, the first sketches or the first proposals and uh, the first renderings. So let's say, um, or compared to the final result, of course. And uh, during the process, we made tons of sketches of different proposals uh, to make, um, you know, to uh, synchronize uh, us, you know, to the customer mindset. And that's why we have also some uh, sketches in the shelf just to visualize this a little bit. So, um, yeah. We have, um, to make it a bit more tangible, we have these early sketches and um, all of them, they are totally different. Um, they have a totally different approach, but all of them are really nice and I can promise you, if it were up to me, I would build them all, that's for sure. But it shows, you know, the journey or the path um, is never straight and uh, there's always a kind of interaction between the designer and uh, the environment. But we have a lot more of sketches 
Um, we have another one, yeah, for example, this one this is much closer to the current model, what we have uh, today here. Um, but you see that, for example, the, um, the, the, the skateboard rack is missing and the seat is totally different. So we discussed that back and forth and then finally we ended with um, the next sketch. This is uh, somehow, you know, the one what we, uh, got, uh, what we see today here in, in life and in, in real. Yeah, and uh, even in the details, yeah, we discussed a lot about, for example, yeah, this is an example for the handlebar, yeah, but um, we, we talked about the levers, the buttons and something like that. And this is, this was simply, yeah, not fitting because uh, we, we couldn't see some, yeah, uh, connections with the, with the rest of the bike. So finally, we came then with um, the next picture. And uh, this is much closer to the original, what we have today here. So you, what you see is that, uh, of course, there's always a kind of interaction and uh, yeah, the path is never straight. Andy, this is somehow, you know, how we, uh, the, 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 let's say the, the change or the, um, yeah, this is what we, what we did finally. Yeah. Yeah. And who wants a straight path anyway, Alex? Anyway, it's, it's great to get those insights and just to see how you got to, how you, you know, fulfilled the journey and where you got to uh, now. So fantastic sketches all the same. So can you explain though, what a bike like this could be like to ride. I mean, it looks to me like it's got a really low center of gravity. It's a bit right back. It looks a lot of fun to ride. I can only imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're totally on the right path. I mean, without exaggeration, I mean, um, it's, it's a pure fun. Uh, first of all, you hop on and you will definitely have a mega cool attitude on that bike. You know, you can't do something wrong. You don't need to learn how to sit on. And this is really, really cool. You hop on and you both, you and the bike create a kind of symbiosis. Um, beside that, it's mega compact. You mentioned it already, of course. It has a short wheelbase, a low center of gravity, and this leads right away into maneuverability and finally into riding fun. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's agile, it's fast, it accelerates like crazy, of course, and, um, but it will keep you always in a relaxed mode. This is important. At any time, you will have a smile on your face and not a fear. This is really important. So basically, um, it will give you at any time, you know, a, a, a feeling of superiority somehow, you know, because it's fast, it's mega robust, it's reliable, it's, um, f it, it has a forgiving uh, behavior, so it behaves like a, like a companion. So finally, I could say it's a, uh, let's say it's a, it's a skateboard on two wheels. Yeah, this fits best. Yeah, it looks fantastic. And unfortunately for me, I live out on the countryside. I mean, it's an urban vehicle, clearly. So I guess it's not for me, but I do have a son and daughter in two different cities and I know that they'd be really interested. So what would the licensing requirements be for an e-scooter like this? Yeah, Andy, um, well, um, if your kids have, you know, an A1 driving license, so it would be per per perfect. But if not, mm, Andy, may you have to invest again in your kids. <laughs> but seriously, I mean, I have it on the radar, what you meant. And uh, uh, for, for the moment, we have these A1 driving license in focus. Um, but uh, we are currently, you know, thinking about to make it, you know, even, uh, yeah, uh, to take it uh, or, yeah, to take different driving license in account yeah, to, to make the CE02 uh, more accessible as possible uh, for different you know needs and demands and uh, to make it even more attractive simply to enlarge the target group so don't worry we have it on the radar so um, maybe there are some more options we're gonna see Good to know. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, now, personalization, customization, you showed some stickers and graphics earlier. It's important among this target group, isn't it? So what options might be considered for an eventual production version? <laughs> I mean, um, uh, Andy, at the moment, we are, of course, we are just talking about uh, this concept bike. But uh, I can promise you, as uh, uh, for, for an eventual production version, we would have um, tons of ideas, definitely. Uh, we will definitely have a bunch of uh, different individualization pieces. Um, and just to get or to, to, to give you an imagination, uh, also some, uh, some sketches I'm going to show you here, um, uh, just to, to uh, show you what it could be possible, for example. We have that one. This is, you know, our, um, let's say, um, yeah, art. Uh, a bike or a street art bike, so to speak. Uh, so to speak, we have uh, tons of uh, spray cans on the bike. You know, you see also these uh, little searchlights down there below on the on the battery um, cover. 
also these, um, let's say, the little screen, the orange one. So there is a lot what we can do. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, and during the process, yeah, the designers had a lot of fun to develop a bunch of ideas that exceed already yeah, the normal individualization. But I want to show you this as well. And uh, the, next, uh, um, the next picture is, you know, this emergency vehicle. Um, for the Department of Health and Human Sources. Of course, this is, um, let's say, a little bit a joke, you know, but a little bit the joke to our, let's say, current lifestyle with Corona. And uh, in the upper left edge, you have these uh, babushka, for example, she's serving the dishes. So this is, it's, it exceeds already, you know, the normal individualization, but it shows, you know, the enormous creativity in my team. So. For the uh, serial production one, I can promise you there will be a lot of uh, items we're gonna, gonna present then later on. Yeah, thanks for that. I mean, I love the way you guys let your imaginations run wild and uh, yeah, I totally understood why you can't elaborate too much. So moving on then. Look, I'm always interested in smart solutions that, that really embrace the future like this. So perhaps you can talk me through some of the tech on this latest concept, you know, like such as the performance to weight or the overall battery range for the urban environments that the bike's designed for. Look, I mean, basically, it's just a concept bike. That means that all these numbers are still in motion and just a rough orientation, not more, not less. Um, but we are thinking about 11 kilowatts, of course, engine power. We are talking about something like 120 kilograms, you know, empty weight, um, as well as 90 kilometers of range and a max speed, yeah, around about 90, something like that. And the seat height, yeah, we are talking about for that one, 730. So, but this is just a rough orientation. So keep in mind, you know, this uh, stuff is still in motion. Totally understand. Yeah, it's good to get the ballparks if I can a little bit from you anyway, Alex. So, but just looking at it from here, you know, through my screen, it looks so much lighter than a typical motorbike. So I'm guessing it'll be super easy to negotiate the city traffic on, but I'm actually now wondering if it could also fit on the back of a camper van for those longer road trips where, you know, entering cities with low emission zones or congestion charging areas would otherwise be pretty expensive in my camper. Hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, I agree. It's, it's, it's right a tool to negotiate the city traffic and crowded roads because it has definitely the ideal DNA, so to speak. So it's mega agile, as you mentioned. It's fast. It it's acceler uh, accelerates like crazy, of course. And uh, you're totally right. And it could fit as well um, on a camper. So it's light enough and uh, mega compact. Um, it would definitely yeah, be the right companion on a list, long distance trip, so to speak. Um, especially as on an as an as an alternative in low emission zones. So why not? Yeah, it could it could work. Okay. Yeah. So on a, on a slightly more serious note, now do you think the events of the past eighteen months have actually had a lasting effect on the way people are travelling around our cities now? You know, and that many are maybe looking for more freedom, more personal space, and dare I say it, increasingly independent ways of modern urban mobility. Ooh, to be honest. Uh, I don't know. I mean, um, if this if this has any effect, I mean, could be, could not be. Um, I guess I'm not uh, enough traffic scientist or a psychologist. <laughs> this is this question is simply too three dimensional to to answer that question seriously. So I I don't know. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Yeah, it's a tough question for sure. But but I many of you are able to, ex you know, first experience sustainable fun riding on a cool e-bike li like this at, say, age 16. It's unlikely that you're going to make a switch to fossil fueled internal combustion engines afterwards. So I'm kind of now wondering if there could be other e-models in the pipeline for these new customers to upgrade to. <laughs> Good question. Of course, Andy, I mean, there are some, some other e-models planned, you know, to, to upgrade as well, of course. And uh, even though I can't tell you, you know, too concrete right now, but keep in mind in 2019, um, uh, we, we have shown our vision DC Roadster, and this uh, is already a proper hint yeah, that uh, we're going to rock the e-mobility market with a lot more uh, models, of course. Yeah, that's good news for sure, Alex. Now, I'm assuming that these future customers won't be coming from a typical motorcycle background, so perhaps they won't know about typical rider equipment. So what are you likely to offer that is stylish but also functional? 
Andy, I think I, I really like the question, um, but I guess um, this is more relevant for gear and garment. Uh, so let's shift this question to my charming colleague, Julia. And uh, she is much deeper into this kind of stuff. So um, come on, Julia, come on stage. Huh? Ah, nice clip. Thanks, Julia. Well, thanks for coming on the live stream today. Hi, Andy. Hi, nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, well, look, that didn't look like typical rider gear to me, so I, I don't even know if I should call it rider gear. I mean, what's the background story here? Well, actually, I would really say it's a fashion statement, but one with a lot of innovations. Um, somehow it's still, of course, a rider's gear, but the customer and the people that uh, we actually see on the C02 are so different to our usual customer that it is for us so essential to catch and fetch their attention to our products on a different level. Um, and yeah, we're really inspired by fashion trends and trend colors, on the other hand by urban vibes, music, lifestyle and of course by the CE02 itself. Yeah, I mean, I, I've never seen clothing like this before. So is it a glimpse of the type of materials and designs that you're exploring for the future? Uh, in a way, yes. We're always looking for cool, different ways of progressing design, but we're entering new segments and new areas of mobility, especially in the urban environment. Um, so our challenge is really to touch young people and this with trendy and fashionable products and still f very functional. So this is uh, what you see right here. Yeah, so can you tell us a little bit more then, Julia, about the structure of these jackets? You know, what material is used or and where the technology comes from even? This is a very new printing technique and it's called grid skin. Uh, and um, fun, yeah, funny enough, or not funny enough, this guy that actually invented uh, the grid skin is a Munich based industrial designer. And uh, we're lucky enough to use it for our products. and. Um, you, can, you could call it print on protection and the amazing thing about it is that it's abrasion resistant and on the other hand even uh, yeah, impact absorbing. And um, yeah, also the whole design and development process was so exciting um, as we really managed to do all of it here in Munich uh, with local companies including even sewing and printing and um, yeah, not only of the grid skin but also all the other little gadgets and accessories in the jacket were really were made here and uh, the other wonderful thing was that we uh, really enjoyed making making all of it with um, with those people and we had so much fun and uh, yeah we inspired each other that was really a lot of fun doing it yeah sounds like it I really love the idea as well of using the protective elements as a visible part of the design you know rather than hiding it away as is the norm Yes, you're right. Normally, we really would hide the protection in our urban products, um, but different segments demand different protection and different ways also to implement it in normal riders' gear. But um, these jackets are so different, and um, yeah, and the protection is actually the key design element of our jack jackets. This printing technology um, allows us to play with patterns and colors, and on top, it gives the material even a 3D structure. So. What you see here on the ladies' jacket is um, that we, we use the transparent material and, you, um, and the color of the print on uh, protection shines through. Um, on the men's version, we, uh, you see more the structure and the 3D effect on the material that makes it so special. Um, but also, not only revelation, the functionality um, uh, makes the connection to the CE02 with its tr transparent seat, but also the graphics and colors of the bike were inspiring for our design. Yeah, can you tell me a little bit more about the graphics and colors? Because, I don't know, there's something retro about them. Yeah, yep, a lot of these colors are fashionable right now and remind us actually of the late 80s and early 90s. Uh, and on top we played with gold and gradient colors. Um, on the other hand, how we place the graphics and using serifs reminds you even more on high fashion labels. And then on the other hand, you can also see um, uh, classical color combinations like black and white. Uh, but then the cut and the craftsmanship of the jackets brings it back to a very modern and very contemporary look. 
Yeah, certainly does. Thanks, Julia, for showing us all that. I mean, there are some real firsts there for BMW Motorrad for sure. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how these design concepts progress in the near future too. So, uh, right, I think we've got a little time left for a few questions from our community. So let's see if we can bring Alex back into the studio and uh, yes. also see if we can't get the first question up on our screens, please. Okay. <laughs> This is one for you, Alex, uh, and it's from someone called Alex. Can I charge my phone and listen to my music on this? I'm sure he's talking about the uh, concept CE02. Uh, of course, of course. I mean, definitely you can do this. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, definitely part of the, of the whole package. Yes, of course. Connectivity for connectivity, absolutely guaranteed. All right, thank you. Next question, please. Okay, Tobias, I I know the answer to that, so I'm going to answer this one. Is this the concept version or the final production version? As much as I'd love that it would be the final production, we're a little bit early. It's the concept version, but glad that you like it, Tobias. Okay, let's have the next question, please. Okay, this one's for you, Julia. How is the weight of those jackets compared to a conventional motorcycle textile jacket? Good question. Very good question. It's a lot lighter because this print-on technology uh, uh, really gives us, um, yeah, makes the weight a lot lighter. Normal protectors are so heavy, or not so heavy, we're also progressing there and it's, they're getting lighter and lighter, but this technology uh, gives us a chance to be a lot lighter. <laughs> Great stuff. Okay, super. Another question, please. What is the target range for the electric battery? Okay, over to you for that one then, Alex. That's from Charlie Davis. The target range of the battery, what, what is it? What's it what meant, does it mean concrete? What, what, you, what sort of areas are you looking towards? Obviously, you know, it's an urban vehicle and it's for a short urban trip. So you're thinking about how, how far do you think that the battery range should be for something designed for that kind of environment, you know? Yeah, I mean, as I mentioned already, I mean, we are somewhere in the focus of 90 kilometers, so that the capacity is enough for 90 kilometers, something like that. This is somehow, you know, the range we have, we, we have in mind. And uh, yeah, this is uh, something, a rough orientation, so to speak. But we, we're going to see. I mean, of course, we are dealing with these kind of stuff still. So this could be that we, that we, uh, that there, there's a little bit, let's say, room for motion, so to speak. But let's say 90 kilometers. Yeah. 90, 90 kilometers, I think that's around uh, 55 miles for those of you who work in miles still. So yeah, thanks for that, Alex. Okay, could we have another question, please? <laughs> Does it come with a petrol engine option? No, we're moving away from that. We're moving away from that, Pierre, come on. This is the future, not the past. Okay, next question, please. All right, this one's for you, Julia. Is the jacket waterproof and breathable and washable? It won't stay clean for long in the city. I know you're looking at that uh, transparent one there, aren't you? Yeah. Waterproof, washable, well, breathable. Well, the concept jackets are not waterproof right now, but they are definitely breathable and they're also uh, washable. But um, I think if we're really starting to, to make those products, we're going to have a waterproof one as well. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sure you are. Superb. Okay. Thanks, Julia. Next question, please. <laughs> this one's from Melanie. What's it weigh? Uh, I think she's talking about the concept bike. I'd love to put it on the back of my camper van. She's got a camper van too, Alex. What's it weigh? I'm not so deep into this camper van stuff, but I guess it will fit. I mean, it's compact enough and we are talking about 120 kilograms. So um, I guess it, it, it's handleable. Yeah, it, it could work. It could work. I think we might have started something there. So uh, absolutely, 100%, it'll fit on the back of your camper van, Melanie. All right, then we're just about out of time, but loads for us to think about in terms of the kind of bikes people could be riding in the future and the kind of gear they could be wearing. So thanks, Alex, and thanks, Julia, for giving us more than just a glimpse into a possible two-wheeled future. Thanks to all of you out there for watching along. It will come as no surprise if I tell you that there's a lot more to come as the year progresses. So as they say, watch this space. Bye for now. Bye, Andy. Ciao, Andy. Bye.